Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alyssa Eichler, and today I get the opportunity to talk to you about a topic that is very close to my heart and a topic that is becoming more talked about and people are becoming more aware of in the education system. And what I'm talking about is trauma informed teaching. First off, I'm going to talk about why I'm so passionate about trauma informed teaching. What is childhood trauma? my method of collecting data, some of my results, and my next steps. So first of all, my passion for childhood trauma sprung when I started working at an organization in Raleigh called Hope Brains. Hope Brains is an equine therapy organization where we pair a rescue horse with a hurting child to provide open healing for the both of them. In my experience, there was life changing. But I learned two key things. I learned that there are so many kids in the world who are hurting, going through unimaginable pain and experiences that I cannot even fathom going through. And second of all, there's a way to help them through their pain that actually is doable. And it's beautiful to see. So, as I was working there and volunteering there, I was realizing that there are many kids being impacted here. But what about every other kid in our state? How about every other kid in the country who's experiencing trauma, right? What kind of services are being provided to them? How are they getting through their trauma? Most likely they're not, right? And this leads to negative effects in their future, which I want to see not happening, right? I want children to be healed. And I think the best place to start is the classroom, right? Our students in our classrooms. So before this can start, we need to know what is childhood trauma. So trauma comes in two different categories. First, there's acute trauma, which is a single short-lived event that affects you mentally or physically, right? The death of a loved one, being raped or mugged, being violently assaulted or witnessing domestic violence or a violent assault, being in a car accident, right? Then we have complex trauma or chronic trauma, which occurs over a long period of time and it is pervasive and threatens a child emotionally and physically. This could be parental separation, incarceration of a family member, substance misuse within the home, a cancer or another medical diagnosis, and many more. So because of this, the CDC and Kaiser Permanente in 1998 did a study, studied the correlation between adverse childhood experiences, right, childhood trauma, and negative health outcomes. And what they found was the more adverse childhood experiences that a child experiences in their childhood, the higher the likelihood that they're going to develop a life-threatening disease, such as heart disease, cancer, stroke, the more likely they're going to have mental health um, issues like having suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety, and many more. And ultimately, the more likely they are to die early. Now, these things can be fixed, right? We can put a Band-Aid on them, a doctor can help them, but to fix their physical brokenness, let's take a look at their internal brokenness, right? When a child experiences trauma, it goes under the skin and physically changes the wiring of their brains, right, in their amygdala. Their brains go through into this fight or flight state that can never be turned off. This is known as toxic stress, right? This prolonged activation of the stress hormone that wears on a person's body physically, but also mentally, right? And leads them to think things negative that are actually not true about them, right? And if you look to the right of the screen, these are the impacts of childhood trauma, not even all of them, but there's only one section that's physical, right? Then we have cognitive brain development, behavior, mental health, relationships, and emotions, all of these categories are affected 
when a child goes through childhood trauma. This needs to be eradicated, right? We cannot have all these children facing these negative effects. So I went into the schools to see what they're doing about childhood trauma. And I interviewed the principal at Wakefield Middle School. And we talked specifically about four different things. First off, are your teachers trauma informed? Do people feel generally safe in the building, right? Teachers and students. What are things that you notice that a child who's gone through trauma really needs? And are your teachers, do they have access to tangible resources to teach resilience skills, right? And to help kids through their trauma. And I learned a lot of things from our conversation. I learned that there's not a specific trauma informed structure that they have, but they are aware of childhood trauma and they are working on bringing trauma informed practices into their school through professional developments. The principal herself told me that the most important thing that she's noticed is consistency, right? There are many students in Wakefield Middle School who have gone through trauma and consistency created new relationships with teachers has helped them the most, right? And praising every one of their wins. They're gonna have hard days, but when you praise those wins and you make them feel worthy for being in the building, they're gonna to wanna to be there and they're gonna to wanna to heal. So that was awesome. Then I did some more research into what are some actual trauma-informed policies that are around. And there's four key things that each of them talk about. The need for the school to be safe, right? A need for a calming room, a need for a place where children can come down from their stress creating relationship-based cultures, right? One positive relationship with an adult can change a child's life who's gone through trauma. Promoting peer support and positivity. And fourthly, helping students realize their worth again, right? Their worth and their sense of safety has been stolen from them. Let's give it back to them through these programs. And let's partner with their families to help. Something just important that I wanna say is they are not their behavior, their behaviors are just a product of their trauma, right? And the Attachment and Trauma Network came out with the saying that says, the kids who need the most love will ask for it in the most unloving ways. And this is so true. Child who's faced trauma is not just gonna come up to you and ask for help. You need to be able to respond to their call out for help that can come in a negative way towards you. But when we do help these students, there's been some growth, some tremendous growth. We know about resilience, right? The ability to bounce back from trauma, but now we have post-traumatic growth, right? We can bounce back and we can build up our positivity. When you're affirming your students and telling them how amazing they are, you're gonna make them into more positive adults in the future who wanna succeed, who wanna have a purpose and grow. So there's some specific ways of implementation that I'm just gonna fly through because I know time. Constraint, so first of all, teach them. Teach them about what happens to their brains in health class. Be transparent with them. Have specific activities that you do in the classroom, like everyone comes in with burdens, right? Let's have empathy for others. Affirmation sticks, right? Let's affirm each other in the classroom and let's affirm ourselves. Some professional developments. To the right, you'll see two fabulous films that Wakefield Middle School is actually using as a professional development on the top. And Paper Tires is of a high school who implemented trauma-informed teaching into their school because they saw the need for it. Some screenings, right? Let's find those students of concern and put kids in small groups have gone through similar things so they know they're not alone. Finally, my next step, I wanna create a trauma toolkit with all of these things together. I wanna to be able to have a document that I hand to a school and say, here, this is how we're gonna help our students. This is how you're gonna realize that it's a thing. 
You're gonna recognize the signs and symptoms. You're gonna be able to respond in tangible ways, right? How can I make my classroom safe? How do I know when a child is hurt? How do I partner with their families to give them the best support? And what are some actual tangible things that I can do in my classroom to promote trauma-informed policies and then resisting that re-traumatization in our schools? Our schools cannot be full of trauma. Lastly, one out of every four children attending school have been exposed to a traumatic event, right? This is a need. Let's form together and let's create a trauma-informed revolution. Thank you very much.